Martin Bundy uh, on the phone, 3315 Gold View Road. So, uh, first I want to start this off. Uh, right in the Constitution, it says federal government can't own public land. I don't know, it, we all know that. But let's get back to the fact of uh, they, they want to come in with their natural, uh, they want to come in and block all the roads, all right? Well, they say we want to save for our grandkids, you know. Uh, I don't, I'm, I'm young, 17. I don't want to walk. Let's, let's go back like 100 years, whatever they're talking about. I don't think their kids are going to walk the walk either. I, I like driving my dirt bike. I like driving my horse. I go out, I live out there practically. I go out there almost every day I can, okay? When the BLM are here, I live on the road to go out towards Goldview. When the BLM were here, I, the population that was going to Gold Butte was very, very not, barely any. If you see one, it was a federal government, you know. Since, since, since they're gone, you, I've got more dogs hit on the road more than anything. Uh, they, they're so packed with ATVs and, and that's what we like. I go, I go out there and it's not, there's not one piece of trash. Like I said, there'll, there'll, be, a, there'll be a beer can on the ground, you know, you pick it up. That's it. That's on the whole end. Uh, he said, uh, no, I've got to get the cows off, got to get the cows off, you know. Uh, cows are the best thing for the land. The cows, the cows, they eat, and then what do they do? They poop it out, you know. Fertilize the ground, they grow bigger next year. You can complain and say it's not, they're, they're, in the, they're not natural. It doesn't matter. They come, they eat, they poop, they make it bigger. They want to like, talk about the tortoise and how, it, how we, we step on the cow to eat on all this crap. The tortoise, they eat the cow too. It's better for them. It's already chewed. It's already ate. So, honestly, <laughs> let's let's keep it open to us all. Let's let's go out there and have fun. Ken Jensen, <clears throat> I applaud the council in uh, passing this resolution. Um, specifically, the the portion of uh, no more wilderness area. No one knows what the natural resources are under the ground out there. Uh, there are some people who have some suspicions of what's available. But to call, lock it up in a wilderness area, and there's never been a, a wilderness designation that has been re repealed in the history of wilderness resolutions. Future generations might you know, be dr drastically impacted because of the inaccessibility of those resources. Regarding the NCA designation, uh, putting the Bureau of Land Management in charge of the management of that area, their history is dismal when it comes to managing resources. Having grown up in the valley, having uh, grown up on a ranch in this valley, uh, seeing my father and many of many others being managed out of the cattle business by the BLM. Um, there's a there's they have a long history of yes, you have access to the roads, yes, it's unlimited access, but their history is they manage it by saying you're going to have to get a permit. And the price of that permit is going to cost you an arm and leg. The Casa Blanca, a couple of years back, promoted an off-road vehicle excursion out through the Gold Butte area. They didn't realize that they had to have a license permit to do so. The final cost of that permit was something like $27,000 for 12 road vehicle off-road vehicles to take a tour out there. That's how they manage you off from the property. And uh, that needs to be addressed somehow or another because that is their history and it's repeated itself 
over the last 70 years of my life. Thank you. Mayor, Council, my name is Barbara Ellistad, and I do not represent the Virgin Valley Water District as an elected official. I want to make sure everyone is very clear about that. Rather, these comments come as a private citizen and former editor, publisher, and news reporter for the Mesquite Citizen Journal newspaper, according to the courts, during which I studied the Goldfield situation from all angles for several years. I greatly appreciate your inclusion in the proposed resolution about maintaining access to the water rights in Gold Butte that the state of Nevada has granted the water district on paper. It's a vital key to our future, our future growth and the economic development in this valley. However, in my opinion, you left out one important element in the resolution. That is, that Gold Butte will not be declared a national monument in lieu of a national conservation area. And the president does have the right and the power and the authority to declare it a national monument. Monument declaration carries even more restrictions than either an NCA or ACEC holds. There are two men, one of whom has no idea where the speed is. And by the way, I am from Mesquite and not Las Vegas. <coughs> and both have very little vested interest in Gold Butte compared to the local residents who lived here for years and years, I being one of them. These men will be leaving public office in about 18 months. With a simple phone call and a simple stroke of a pen, it's my fear that these men will care only about pandering <coughs> to their base and willingly declare Gold Butte a national monument. Doing so will make the matter even worse than it already is. But I'm not sure you can trust my word because according to one local woman who I haven't talked to in three years, declared that I suffer from emotional instability, rage, and derangement syndrome, whatever that is. All this from a woman whose business partner has an SEC conviction for fraudulent stock trades and led at least one company he was CEO of into bankruptcy followed by his personal bankruptcy. I have documents for that. However, thank you for the job you've done on this issue and I hope you take my input into consideration. Thank you. Larry Rever, 10 10 Lane, 49 years resident of Mesquite. Uh, I'm sure John knows what she was just talking about. I've looked it up. Uh, you know, these all these people out here are wanting to save Gold Butte. Well, aren't we all? Save it from what? What's going on out there that I don't know? Sir, I was out there last please week. Please address the council, not the audience. Okay, I was there last week. There was nothing I seen that was disturbed. No bikes off the road. Yeah, there might be a person here or there to go off the road. Just the same as I seen graffiti on the back road the other day. Does that mean that we shut down Old Mill because one little kid went and graffitied the wall? I don't think so. You know, these people would have them shut the lane. Shut the road, nobody goes down that lane, no more. Because of one little kid graffitied. You know, they talked about saving it. Save it from what and for who? You know, my little kid, 12 years old, we were at a meeting here. They asked him, he asked them, what are we saving it for? And the comment was made to him from a spokesman from the BLM, we're saving it for our grandkids. My 12-year-old says, don't you think I'm a grandkid? Don't you think I want to enjoy this property? You know, they take this picture like, oh, it's really going somewhere. There's nothing going on out there, guys. I see two beer cans. Guess what? I stopped and picked them up. So for all this graffiti and all this stuff that's going on out there, it's not. You know, so paint this picture that we need to close it. And do they think if they close it to ATVs, do they even realize it's 40 miles out there? Are they going to walk out there? I don't think so. Thank you. 
I've lived here all my life, 21 years. Um, I just like to commend the city council um, for revisiting this issue. And I know these last two weeks, you guys have had a, a pretty rough week and um, a lot of attacks and personal attacks on you guys and your character and, and your, your heritage and my ancestry and your ancestry. Um, I just want to say one thing. Um, there's a lot of people out here in this audience that think that this is about Clive and Bunny, and it's not. Um, now, let me tell you what I think this is about. On our interstate here, run through town, there's a sign out there that says Abercanabra. And, you know, I've been out to Canab a couple times, and it's just a small little town out in the southern Utah desert. Um, but one day in the, in the, in the 90s, um, the citizens of Kane and Garfield County went to bed, and the next one they woke up with the National Monument at the door, and they lost everything. They lost roads, they lost water rights, they lost range rights. Um, they lost property taxes, um, they lost mineral rights, and to this day, um, some of those roads out there in Cannon and Garfield County still have not been returned to that county. Uh, you know, for me, this is not about Clyde Bunny. It's about me, whenever I'm some of these people's age, 50, 60, 70 years old, being able to go out there and ride around my foiler and be able to go see the stuff that I saw when I was a kid. And if I take my kids out there, I want to be able to do that. So that's what it's about. And to be honest, um, the BLM, um, you know, and anybody else, they haven't really shown me that they can take care of it better than I can take care of it. And I have every reason to believe that one day, if we're sitting down this road, that I will wake up and it will all be gone and I won't be able to go out there. And so I commend you guys for what you're doing right now and I appreciate it. Mesquite. I want to commend you guys. You've had a lot of pressure put on you. There's been a lot of trash talk then put out here in the last two weeks. been a lot of innuendo, a lot of accusations, a lot of confusion. And there's been some that likes to blur the lines. And they've tried intentionally to throw Clyde and Bundy into this, though you very clearly made it clear Bundy had nothing to do with it. But it was necessary to clear those lines. They had to confound the whole subject here in an effort to get their agenda forward. Now, if they want you to believe being wilderness means nothing, poo poo, no big deal. Well, you know what? Apparently, they've never been where there's a wilderness designation. California, Golden Trout, it has gone rogue there. There's a pack station there in the Golden, in the Golden Trout Wilderness that has, this will be their last year in existence unless they win their appeal. The Obama administration, they're, they're one of their court appointees, judge appointees, three years ago went the full distance on the wilderness designation. They've now got to give up their 100 year plus pack station and vacate the, the wilderness. The only people, and, and now this is a downhill slope. It doesn't go uphill, it doesn't get better. It only gets worse. What I'm saying is a fact. They're appealing it, but who knows whether that'll be won. I watched a lot of old places back there, Jordan Hot Springs, Kern Hot Springs, a lot of places people used to go to, they used to love to go there. Mostly backpackers, like these guys, myself. You know what? They got locked out, guys. They didn't go in and raise the buildings. They didn't go in and tear out the springs. Instead, they designate it for them, the few. Now, I'm talking about government employees for government training, government outings, R&R for those, for those elitists. This is what's coming, and this is where they want to take it. And this is necessary for the left to blur this thing and make you think, hey, it's only a little bit of medicine, you won't hurt. Yeah, right. Educate yourselves, find out about this wilderness thing, because folks, it is a cancer, and unless we start pushing back, it's going to get out of hand. And this is exactly where these guys want to take it. They have no intention for Americans to continue to use this place. Foreigners, yes. The establishment, yes. But Americans like you guys and me, uh-uh. We're going to be on the outside of the end. And they know it. David Baldwin. Uh, a lot of us a lot of people here have had different life experiences. I have a very uh, distrustful 
opinion of, the, of government and federal government one. If you've been in business for 30 years, I've experienced some very oppressive, uh, I take them attacks by the government. Uh, you ought to have the uh, IRS breathe down your back and, uh, for no reason. You provide all the paperwork and they say it doesn't matter. You're going to pay something, otherwise you're, 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 you know, you're going to be punished. Have OSHA show up at your plant for no reason. Uh, go through, I mean, I mean, it's like, they go through it like, I mean, it's worse than a colonoscopy. I mean, they go through the place and they just, they just attack you. And there's, there's no recourse to it. You have to take the abuse. And if anybody's experienced that, you have to understand why I distrust the government. Now, uh, and, and that's the big government, federal government. The one thing I do want to uh, uh, really compliment this council, whether I agree with you or not, this council is transparent. Before Mark Weir's uh, administration, this, the council was extremely closed. You couldn't get anything. Uh, I was one of the ones that pushed when, uh, when, when Councilman Hafen was elected uh, and, and, Mr., and, and when Mayor Weir was elected to push for the tech reviews. They were open meetings, so everybody understood what was going on. I complained and complained and complained that we would have maybe three days notice and it was impossible to rally any type of, uh, of, of support or a contradiction to what was being said in that three days. Now everybody, because of these efforts of these council members here, just about every one of them, we have a 10 day window. That helps me, that helps the opposition, helps everybody understand what it is. And I have never had a problem with this council from, from Mark Weir's administration to now uh, of ever getting information, uh, legitimate information that, that I needed to have understanding on. And last in closing, I was at the tech review. I clearly remember Councilman Haven saying Whitney Pockets, and it was asked in the, in the, in the text of what else from, from, Ms., from Mr. Sweeten saying, what else do you really want to add to this? And there was a comment about, how about the, 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 uh, the uh, visitor center and some other things, but uh, I, I remember uh, if the people lit there didn't listen or didn't understand what was said, it was said. And I understood what was said.